What's up, everybody? This is Dustin with D-Link Gaming. Um, we are here talking with the FGC godfather, Mr. Alex Valle himself. Alex, welcome to the show. Hey, guys. How you doing? Um, so I wanted to walk through a few things. I wanted to talk about your history in the fighting game community since it goes back a ways to the very beginning. Um, and also talk about Street Fighter V and, and what you think about the, the current state of, of affairs in the FGC. So maybe you could talk a little bit about how you got into Street Fighter to, to begin with. Oh, wow. Uh, you're digging uh, way back. <laughs> <laughs> so believe it or not, um, I wasn't relatively the oldest school of them all. You know, there's a, uh, there was actually an older generation in mine. It's just, um, I'm more of like, my breakthrough performances came through like the alpha series, right? Mm -hmm. But I have played the old games, you know, I had to play the old games to kind of teach me how to play the new ones, sure. or the, at least at those times. Uh, and the old ones, you know, they came out in 1991, 92, and I was relatively young. I was like, uh, you know, 13 years old. I was, but I still played, right? I, you know, I was a arcade player. Right. And uh, as I got, you know, dropped off by my folks, or uh, you know, a friend of mine took me to these arcades and just saw variety, you know, so many people at one machine. And we're used to playing at the times before Street Fighter. We were used to playing just games to beat the high score, but never really games that you can play somebody else to beat them and this was the game and we're like wow now we get to you know we're not playing against computer no more we are playing versus somebody else we want to beat their ass right. you know we want to beat them beat them down and uh that was you know so addicting for everybody and um from there you know it's just learning you know as as a new player how do you do these moves <laughs> you're just pushing whatever buttons that look cool and, and because there was no move lists at the time uh, not everybody uh, didn't have a uh, internet access either so it was just uh, a lot of creativity until people just kind of figured it, figure it out on, its, on their own and uh, you know uh, Street Fighter 2 and then there was Champion Edition and Hyper um, I was like owning up my skills going to traveling to different arcades um, but um, it was never like I, was, I wasn't a true tournament player until around uh, I would say Street Fighter Alpha One, you know, because about that time, like, you know, I was able to you know, get around to uh, places that weren't just in Orange County and SoCal, where I'm from. Uh, you know, I met players that were older than me that kind of introduced me to the top top level guys like Mike Watson, and uh, which was, he was like the the best player in SoCal. And um, the first time when I met him, uh, you know, it was kind of like I was the best in my little bubble, but then he, you know. Word got around that I was starting to get good. He came down, and of course, he beat me <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> so that's how it is for everybody. Everybody think like at the time, everybody thinks like they're the best eventually. Like, oh, there's this awesome Guile player. Oh, there's this awesome Ken player. So it was like the age of discovery back then, and uh, I was like, I was a Ken player <laughs> uh, back then, and I just um, I felt like I never had control of the match. Uh, Watson. Uh, you know, Mike Watson was one of the old school uh, Street Fighter players that would win the tournaments around those times, which I didn't en I didn't enter yet. And he controlled the pace of the match, which with any character he picked, because he understood the game so well. But his main characters were like uh, Ryu and Guile, which totally showed how the game was supposed to be played. And I took note of that. I'm like, maybe you know, Ken isn't the character. I, you know, I should excel with maybe i need to control the games like, like mike would and i picked up ryu and i learned to, i relearn everything and uh by the time uh, alpha 2 came out is kind of where i picked it up in shine and from there up to like 2001 i was pretty much winning every single street fighter tournament so that's the humble beginnings of me awesome do, do you feel like things changed once you had your famous i think it was your first showdown with with daigo that still lives on on um on youtube was was that alpha 2 or alpha 3 that was alpha 3, three. okay so yeah um oh lots of things have changed you know when you are when you start to win um and you kind of keep pushing yourself and testing yourself are you really the best and i you know i traveled to different states you know at like 18, 17, 18 year old, you're like kind of like, oh wow, you know, you can, he's fresh from high school to like checking out new towns, right? And you can't even like 
buy a drink yet, <laughs> but you just want to play and beat people up in Street Fighter. Um, and yeah, I was, I was beating people, um, and some matches were really, really close. Like uh, my my rival, of course, was uh, after you know, uh, kind of beating Mike Watson in my area, which took a while. Uh, John Choi was my my rival, and he was in NorCal. Um, after going through that phase, you know, I had to find out who the best in the East Coast was, which was Eddie Lee at the time. Which um, uh, like he actually beat me a couple times, and that Kate, you know, brought forth the East Coast West Coast rivalry, which was really really important because there was not many major tournaments around those times. There was only a, f- a couple. There's only a couple, uh, and uh, it, you know, as the landscapes changed and more regions started to get, get better at the games, uh, Alpha Three came out and. Uh, of course, I was, you know, I was still talented from the previous iterations of Street Fighter that I played, and, um, you know, I, I was still maintaining the whole the the lead with everybody. I was still a, a step above everybody in skill. Um, so I thought, like, you know, at this time, I don't, I didn't even think I could lose. Uh, and then the Alpha Three Nash or the World uh, uh, Championships came to fruition, and that was the event that I had to train to play the very first international match with, with, with Daigo, right? And we have no footage of the Japanese players. Absolutely none. You know, YouTube wasn't around then. Right. Uh, so it, it, was, it was a huge, huge, like, just, like, the biggest blind date you can ever have. <laughs> right? <laughs> international waters. It's, like, literally the first international match. And, um, you know, USA has their pride. You know, it was a different time back then. You know, my, my handle is Cali Power, so I had a lot of pride where, right. where I was from. Um, you know, people were still chanting either USA or like Cali or something. And, you know, we, 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 those, were, those were the times. And uh, uh, the, the Japanese players, though, like uh, when they come out, they just respect the – it doesn't matter who it is. They don't really have to chant. They just cheer on good Street Fighter play. Like wherever you are, I remember those times. And so um, when Daigo came down, of course, it was kind of like a, who's this guy? Who's this kid? And then he's just beating some ass, right? Like <laughs> left and right. He was just, I mean, the match with me and him was really, really close. And that was just like a culture clash. Like two, you know, completely different, you know, countries and man, way across the world from each other. Uh, just come in at each other full force, not knowing what e- each other does, and uh, going to the last game, and, and uh, it, it just showed how much he can adapt faster than I could. You know, my my game plan was to do everything I can possibly do to rush him down without him adapting, but he did. He adapted, and then he brought forth uh, what he unleashed. That's why his uh, Daigo the Beast was born. Right. And there was some stuff that we've never seen before. Uh, he really took advantage of what I didn't know. On top of that, he just kind of like got in my head at that point. Mm-hmm. So, um, and that, that was that was the birth of something that we've never seen before that we should now watch out for. And that <laughs> never ever was d- displayed in the U.S. because it was just me, Choi, and Watson at the time just showcasing the country like how dominant we were. But right. now it's an international game. So, very cool. Yeah. Um, so it's obviously a really different landscape today with um, major brands and corporations sponsoring players and esports is really sort of starting to hit its stride, it seems like. So I was wondering, did you did you always have a dream of, of being sort of a professional gamer or did that seem like a fantasy back then or was that always sort of part of your ambition as a player? Wow, like back then it, it wasn't even... <laughs> It wasn't a thought to be, like, there was no such thing as a professional game. <laughs> right. It wasn't. It was just, like, you're really good. You entered tournaments. There was no sponsorships, or at least that I, we knew of. I, I wasn't um, knowledgeable in the uh, PC world. Like, mind you, I barely got a, a, a computer at, like, 1996, okay? And, you know, they've been out for a little, for a little while of that. <laughs> Right, and you know, I wasn't even a strong one, and we have to deal with like the whole dial-up and all that stuff. <laughs> you remember all those things. Um, so you know, we we never knew that like there was first-person shooters and some old-school RTS games that you know they had professional gamers. Like we didn't read up on that. There was no like at least you know we were all like kind of just looking at forums and news groups, right? While Esports 
uh, for or just professional gaming and other genres in the PC world had like full fledged uh, organization pages, mm-hmm. and tournament pages. That was like not a thing for us. We barely had SRK, <laughs> you know, that that was just like um, news and updates on the small little events that we we had. And so there was no, they, that, that wasn't nowhere in my in my head that like I was gonna become like a professional player, and I, I still don't even think of myself that way today. It's just um, I, I you know I'm more I feel like I, I just was a really good player. Uh, what I can take out of it, maybe I can work in the industry off of it uh, or help others and you know better their game you know but it wasn't because i had to like a, an actual real job on the side of it you know i was always working um you know i had you know, girlfriends at the time and so a lot of real life stuff and right. there was no ten thousand dollar prize pool hundred thousand dollar prize pool i mean if that if that was around back then i would be swimming and me and, <laughs> and i go would be like you know in the money bin swimming like just high-fiving each other yeah you know right. traveling around the world you know, but it wasn't my time for that. You know, it was a, um, it was the birth. It was a lot of history to get to where we are. So, um, that, yeah, that's how it was. Awesome. And so, speaking of where we are now, I wanted to just get your general thoughts on Street Fighter V. I mean, you you stream a lot. You you host Wednesday night fights that I watch every week. Um, you seem really enthusiastic about it. But I just, just want to get your general thoughts about the system itself, um, the player base, the talent, the tech that you've seen, what do you think about it? Okay, so uh, let's uh, set the record straight about my bias in fighting, okay? Okay. So it's not just Street Fighter that I love, right? I love all kinds of fighting games, right? I like new innovations, I like competition, right? Um, I like to have fun. So I'm not the guy that goes and nitpicks everything about a game and it's just and and i call it like worse than the other no i just like new things so street fighter 5 it's a new game i'm happy um it brings it back uh a little bit to where how you know there's no focus attacks so that and no parries at least for the majority of the cast which takes it back to uh, the way it was traditionally played i mean i mean minus the dashing and a couple characters with the run but um they they brought it back Okay, and then uh, I knew that they were going to make it easier on this first run because I mean I, I assume more updates after Capcom Cup or at least major upgrades and overhauls will happen. But uh, this this is the way it has to be done. And looking at Capcom's re- uh, portfolio, all games start you know as vanilla as possible. Street Fighter Three did that, you know Alpha One. Well, Alpha One had a lot of crap actually in the, in the first try. Uh, you know, you think of Street Fighter 2. It was super bare bones. So Street Fighter 5 is going to be as bare bones, but with a couple of things like the the V uh, the V gauge um, and like the crush uh, the crush counter system. But uh, in one one thing that people need to understand too, and uh, and whenever there is a new uh, Street Fighter, it has to bring in new players, right? In some some way. Uh, one of, one of the things that uh, uh, one of the things Capcom learned in the past that, that they mentioned was when they made Street Fighter 3, that was the first game that didn't really bring the, more of the new players in. It just brought more of the hardcore players in. Right. Right. Uh, but then when they did Street Fighter 4, it, it actually did bring the new players in. They did it right that time. And there was like a, I mean, given to that there was a, over seven or something years without a new Street Fighter game. Right, so they brought a lot of the excitement back, and Street Fighter Four was super vanilla. Like they only had every character only had one um, ultra, so there was like it was a focus, but there was no red focus, and and there were like uh, less than twenty characters or so. I forget, but um, yeah, they they brought that back. Street Fighter Five, same kind of ordeal, but I think it was a good segue from Street Fighter Four. You know, they um they took away all the uh, crazy hard links i mean there are still uh, a couple of challenging combos in there but not not as crazy as landing you know um viper combos or right. consistent able step kick stuff so yeah. it gave more people uh time to really find out the strategy of the game versus you know 
stay in the lab and just practice one combo until like they get it down and then they can play. You know, that, that, that kind of gets boring, <laughs> well, at least for me. So I, I'm, I'm really happy for that. And of course, the net play and the cross play and um, what it's doing for the scene worldwide. Uh, now that Street Fighter V is released worldwide at the same time, nobody gets a head start. Uh, no, no, there should not be any um, bitching about that. You know, it's just, uh, I, I expect to see a lot more international presence as they learn the game. I know it's it's really early right now, and you kind of still see like, you know, there's infiltration to keto. Some of the veterans from Street Fighter Four are still kind of like dismantling people, but that's just their talent. Wait until everybody learns the game, understands it all, and I think I think we're gonna see some new heads down the road, and we're gonna see some of the guys that were late bloomers in Street Fighter Four start and get their chance in Street Fighter Five. Like Chris T, for instance, he just won a major at West Coast Warzone, and. I mean, right. he was just—he was right there. He's one of those kids like that is gonna boom up. And, you know, Filipino man is just right there too. I think some guys from the East Coast are gonna bring it up too. Um, that were doing well at the end of Next Level Battle Circuit. Like I think Native Impact is doing really well. Um, you know, and I, I just think uh, we're gonna see more of that in every region. Like in South America, you know, we're yeah, gonna see absolutely. that, and even in Japan, the like the new uh, Japanese uh, top players, right? in Europe as well. I can't wait. And I have good faith to see stronger Street Fighter play worldwide than just like Japan and America, right? It's just worldwide stuff. So I'm excited. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. Um, do you see any matchup issues? And um, I also want to know what your top, I don't know, three to five is because it's, it's really varied, it seems. Unlike most games where there's a pretty clear understanding of who the top players are, you can ask five or ten different pros and get five or ten different answers. So. Uh, yeah. It, okay. So, um, I never really, uh, I never really been a fan of of tier lists or whatnot. But I can tell you, like, what characters seem to have the least amount of problems. Uh, you know, and and obviously this is my my opinion. Uh, I will put Nash up there. His defense is just so good at this point of the game. Uh, he might not do that much damage, right? Uh, but there's no character in the game that he cannot control the pace of the matchup um, except Dalson right every every other character in the game has to chase him and he has he just has all the defensive tools so unless like not only do you study the matchup and um, you know how to whiff punish him correctly and all that stuff even if you know all that you still have to worry that he's gonna escape the corner by one of his like pretty pretty awesome dialed in uh, defensive move like his V trigger or his right. V reversal Right, and he's very mobile. His back touch is really good. So, um, but it's still not an easy task, right? It's not an easy task to make him like that great. You you have to, you know, infiltration is the best one that, that's doing work with him, right? But everybody else, Li Joe is also doing really well. But like, you know, these guys, these other guys are uh, losing, right? Uh, I would put uh, Chun Li up there. Yep, she I, seems to be the most consistent that everyone puts up there. Yeah. Uh, Chun Li for sure. Uh, I think she she just has all the right buttons. Mm -hmm. She has all the right buttons. Her mobility is amazing. She does good damage. Her V trigger is one of the best in the game. It lasts a long time. Um, so she has a lot of uh, confirm um, uh, combos off the V trigger, like the crouching slide, the, the overhead, uh, with, you know, her little flip kick. Right. Um, and uh, like her anti airs are just, I mean. She has so many of them. <laughs> standing light kicks, standing hard kicks. She can air throw you. She can air to air. It means she's got it all, right? Um, and but like you don't see her winning the major events. You see her placing top three or second or whatever. Right. right. I mean, um, give give or take at least here in the states, you don't see. Her. It's because um, I, I think that just that character doesn't do the damage that it wants all the time like you, you just she just pokes and pokes and pokes she doesn't land the fatty combos all the time and right. some some of these characters like say for instance uh, uh, you know pick uh, Ryu right uh, Ryu would I, I would put Ryu up there but not but I'm just giving an example like any Ryu can uh, just jump in once on her one time if she's not paying attention over a fireball or if they knock her down and just get her and land a big fat combo and she can die, right? right. By, you know, by making a, a mistake like that. So, all right. So, Ch uh, Chun Li, Nash up there. Um, and so, this, uh, I would say a, a third pick 
up there is is very very debatable. Um, it could be uh, Nikali, and yeah. that character um, he is so straightforward, right? But when he has V trigger, he's one of the best in the game. I mean, his his speed, his damage, like you can never count him out at all. Like I've seen so many matches where he's about to die. He's like five uh, five pixels of life left, or five percent, or whatever, and uh, he hits you with one standing fierce. V trigger or one standing jab, V trigger, knockdown, one like command grab, and then you're dead. Right. Like he, he always has that. Right. He he has just massive comeback potential, mm-hmm. and even without V trigger, he still hurts. Right. So, um, yeah. but like um, it's it's still it's still some work. But those three, you know, everything everybody else is very debatable. Like Karen, she's up there. Like Vega, you know, they're they're very debatable. They're like right there. Um, right. You know, even Ryu, I would actually put him in, in like around the fifth position. Mm-hmm. I would put him a, a, a bit higher, but it's just that every character can fight him. Every character. Yes. Like every, I, I think I believe like even if say you threw five perfect fireballs, right? But that six fireball, you know, like you're trying to figure out like, all right, am I gonna should I poke with it or kind of like what should I do with it? And oh, they jump over it or they have right. a special move that gets through it, and then they bait your uppercut or you don't do anything, and then what? You know, it's like you have to play solid 99 seconds of the damn round. Right. <laughs> you know, and, and, and Ryu without a fireball is more like third strike where you're, you have the parry that it's kind of easy to kind of buffer and, and get it out. But this, the, the, the parry is a, a lot more skillful because you're taking the risk if you don't get the parry. Sure. And um, you, would, you would think a lot of things are pretty easy to parry, even straightforward. But in the heat of the moment, you're going to hesitate or it's just too late. Yeah, you hesitate too early, too late, um, and it, it happens all of the time. So, and you, the only player that's making Ryu look really hot is Tokido, and he's still struggling in top eight. Yeah, still struggling. So, uh, you know, p- people think I'm crazy. They're like, no, Ryu has a potential. And all this. Okay, sure. I I believe he can move up later in the lifespan, but right now he's he's just getting beat by characters that can get around his projectiles have massive comeback potential or characters that can outrange him or just slip away from his offense. Mm-hmm. There's just so many variables. Yeah. I play birdie. I'm a scrubby ultra silver birdie, but um, I've been kind of, I've been bummed there hasn't been more representation of birdie at tournaments. You know, it's, he, he has great buttons. He has great anti fireball stuff. He has huge damage, good V trigger, but no one's really repping birdie. So I hope, some killer player um, is discovered so I can learn, you know? I, that's part of what I love about watching tournaments is watching better players play my characters and learn from them, and I haven't been able to do that so far, really. Yeah, Bert, Birdie is an interesting case. Like, it, when the game first came out, he was super explosive. It was really hard to beat, and the reason right. being is because nobody knew the ranges. They couldn't react to his uh, EX1 dive or the, 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 the chain grab he would get you while, while hopping at you. Um, how to punish his headbutts properly, you know, or or, or the um, when he activates V trigger, everybody's kind of scared. Right, and, right. You know, they don't see they're they're not ready for all that stuff. And I think uh, um, LPN really in the beginning, of course, he just mauled people with Birdie because of uh, lack of knowledge, and and that's that's the type of character that you have to play solid against, or he he can just come back at any time. For sure. Right and yep. uh, with the with the least amount of effort, which is uh, combo we mentioned before that uh, Birdie and Cammy were the characters that you can easily jump into and and do some work, right? But um, Birdie has a four frame jab, so he's very easy to frame trap. You know he has to pick and choose when he can use that jab, and people are getting better now at, at frame trapping. Yep, with like standing light into whatever, and he has to guess. You know he's a sure. can't really jump in on that character, but you can cross him up back and forth. But yeah, he does have his struggles. He does. Cool. So I was hoping we could talk a little bit about level up. Um, just yeah. maybe talk about where where you see your your company now and where you want it to go in the future. Yeah. So um, level up. It in the beginning, you know, it, the whole idea was to level up the community and um, you know fighting games, right? But then we really had to think in, in business wise: is that really going to pay the bills here? Like we really have to, we really had to think back in like 2010. Uh, we have to expand our like technology and our products. Like, what are we gonna do with this? Um, so 
you know, we learned to uh, do some higher end streaming um, and adding cameras and kind of learning the flow of production. So my business partner, like Jimmy Wynn and uh, Frank Reyes, they're the actual the, the tech gurus in, in the company. Really, like, kind of shape up like what did we want to do with this idea? Um, you know, Jimmy with the forefront of of the business models to kind of like figure out if we're going to provide a service for for companies in the future. Or are we just going to keep it community side and kind of run our own events? And you know, we, and I'm like, why can't we just do both and figure out if we can market what we do by our own events, and then in a way having publishers look at what we can do for their games, mm -hmm. right? And bringing the top level talent. And this is all before we can call people talent. <laughs> it was just top player here. Hey, we have a top player here. Oh, hey, we have a knowledgeable uh, commentator here. You know, and 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 these these things just started to form and, and Wednesday Night Fights was the uh, the event to do this with. It was like Wednesday Night Fights is is our brainchild and kind of bringing the SoCal fighting game community together and and it also leveled up our productions. Like we would learn how to have a flow of segments with casters, top players, when to kind of switch the cameras and stuff like that. And it taught us a lot in uh, video production and uh, with Jimmy doing a lot of the research on how to make this uh, more a little more higher end and saving up for higher end equipment and um, you know going eventually getting hired to do events for uh, companies uh, you know like Capcom and uh, Namco you know LG and you know they want to display some of the stuff that we are really good at showing you know it makes sense everybody started to go on the trend of like hey why don't we just hire community guys that can really you know express the message to the consumer. Like, uh, why are these products really cool? Um, or uh, what's, you know, best practices, right? Because um, everybody likes to have fun with products. And, and we, we, luckily, we, you know, we had a show to, to broadcast this with. So from our humble beginnings of that, you know, to streaming major events like SCR, which is our, our yearly event, it's a premier event now for the Capcom Pro Tour, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Jimmy also... Uh, working the the trade show events and uh, the level of production side, uh, you know, doing stuff for Twitch um, and uh, a good game and I am a bit and you know we're doing stuff for like Guild Wars. We've done stuff for like uh, Dota. We've done stuff for Call of Duty. And I mean, it's just we expanded our reach into uh, video production, um, but like fighting games is still our our bread and butter. So even today, you know, Wednesday Night Fights has moved into has evolved into um, you know the the most lavish venue we can possibly get, which is esports arena now. Mm -hmm. So, which is drawing over like oof, um, close to three hundred players a week. And I mean, that's not just all Street Fighter. That's the accumulation of you know Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, uh, Smash Four, Melee, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three. Uh, anybody that wants to bring casual setups for like even Tekken, uh, Tekken Attack Two. Um, Guilty Gear, you name it. Like Wednesday night, like there's sporting events that go, going down, Monday night football, Thursday night football, whatever, Friday night football, and Wednesday night fights is our fighting game night where SoCal comes together and celebrates fighting games. You know, together on a weeknight after like their long day of work or a long school day and we go there and have fun, uh, play some games, watch some cool shows. So it's like a... You know, we're really, really excited in how things kind of ended up, and this has been a six-year run now doing it. You know, it's not yeah. like a, not like a, you know, oh, we can just throw an event and here call all the people. It just, it's, it's the community supporting us uh, from day one and spreading the word because without them, there is no us, absolutely no us. I mean, it's their support, um, it's their way of showing that they want to improve in the games, and it's our way of modernizing the tools they need to uh, express themselves in the game, um, get their name out there, giving, giving them opportunities, right? Uh, showcasing the fighting game community in a positive light, fun, um, and, and help promoting just what we do, uh, hopefully one day to mainstream, you know? And, and uh, as a segue to that, when we take it more serious, is, is our SCR events. So, um, and what we want to do in the future is, I mean, continue what we have now. I mean, we, we, you know, we want to establish the... We have the local scene, the, the, the major scene. Um, you know, we consult for many tournament organizers around the world on, on how to like kind of start up 
Um, and sometimes we, of course, we stream for some of the events. Like, for instance, we did West Coast Warzone, uh, which is not our event, but, you know, they hired us on to be their uh, official provider, a stream provider. Uh, this weekend is Texas Showdown, uh, which, which is in Houston. Um, this will be, we've been, we've been doing it for a couple years now. So, like, um, and then, you know, moving forward with the fighting game stuff, we want to, you know, grow our staff so we can teach them, like, even to do events that we kind of double book on we, because we've done that before. You know, there's, there's multiple events going on in the same weekend. But as you can see, this is a worldwide thing. So, you know, there's people watching in different time zones. And I think the need down the road is, is going gonna, gonna to be extremely high for a higher end production down the road. I mean, people are going to are used to like multiple camera shots and kind of like a good, you know, transitions. And people want the world now. I just remember back then a webcam and just one like microphone was cool enough. Yeah. But people no now wonder. want the world like, hey, why don't you guys get a ticker down there? Why don't you get more Twitter feeds? You know, get an, al- an analysis desk and, yeah. you know, get all this stuff going on and make it like, I'm like, oh, now you guys want esports, huh? <laughs> ah, but when we were, we were trying to push esports back then, you're like, nah, we don't want to watch that. That's too esports. I'm like, well, guess what? Guess, who, guess, guess who's been winning the war this entire time? But it's not a war. It's, esports is a progression. So it's like, you know, we're catering to what's coming because we knew it, it was coming we knew it was coming and and because of the opportunities that are here now like instead of two to three hundred people watching we have hundreds of thousands of people watching this stuff yep. it's crazy it's nuts and and uh you know we can bring up the next star like chris t chris t is on his way man he's he's that ripe age yep. to just start making a huge impact on the future of Street Fighter in the US. So Chris T is actually our next interview, hopefully next oh. week. So we're we're excited okay. to get him on, on the show next. So awesome. yeah. That was a really impressive West Coast Warzone performance. Yeah. That was a crazy close finals. I thought PR Rog was gonna run it back, but it was it was a great series. Yeah. Uh, talking to both of them and I know I'm sure they'll give their two cents, but like uh even like Balrog, uh, PR Rog, he told me is all man when i play him it remind me like like it was me back in my first evo right and yeah. i'm like yep it, it looked exactly like that i felt it too every time i played chris and he was starting to beat me at the uh the last few ultra street fighter 4 events that we held in for wednesday night fights and um you know he was not just beating me he was beating everybody like his hunger just outgrew what we could hold them back for because we always try to hold them back like nah you know what you're gonna have to play and beat us harder right and he did that and and that's how i learned you know we yep. we didn't it's yep. all tough love here like yeah we we love we love all our players here but we're gonna still tell you you suck in front of your face <laughs> so you can beat us down right. we're like nah no nah, that's a, that that's crappy and you got to do this got to do that nah 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 and, and but we understand that you know it's a we have, we have an awesome understanding all the players love each other and um you know, we, I, we expect the world now, man. We, we want to see sure. what's next for Christy. So. Cool. So I've got a couple quick last questions for you here. Sure. Um, first, could you talk a little bit about your gear? Like what stick you use, if it's Hori or Mad Cats, or if uh, you have a chair, just in case people are wondering what your setup is when you play at home. Okay. Yeah. So um, for the past season of Wednesday Night Fights, I have used uh, the Hori... Uh, HRAP 4 Kai, the one that has, um, it's not the silent one, but the one that has the PC mode, which is, um, which works on the, the Street Fighter 5 on PC because it had, it, the PC mode comes equipped with X input. Okay. So um, I use that stick, which is really good. And we also have loner sticks for that at Wednesday Night Fight. So people have been using it. People like it. Um, and the seats um, at Wednesday Night Fights are Vertigear. Mm hmm. Uh, they are the, I believe, the SL four thousand. So we have, they have different colors. So um, uh, we use uh, some black ones, and then uh, for the player ones, it's a combination of uh, red and um, let's see, yeah, the red and black, I believe. Nice, cool. Um, last but not least, I had to ask, what do you think about? The Valle face that's that, that takes over <laughs> Twitch every every few seconds. It seems like. What what are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so um, 
I'm so used to the internet age uh, because I, at the time I had the hardest, you know, like us old school guys, when, when we've seen like people talking trash, right? We know what talking trash is and then what goes overboard. So it took us a while to figure out when people are going overboard, that's just called trolling. Like they're <laughs> directing, they're directing so much like unnecessary hate and all this stuff, but they just know, we know it's like they're just poking at us, right? Yeah. So when it comes to this stuff, like, you know, <laughs> I think it's all in good fun. I think it's, it's just that we're in the meme. We've been in the meme generation. You Definitely. know, people are, are uh, having some fun. It's called interaction, you know, and it, like even your favorite sporting events, they have memes for their favorite players and they put them in dresses and some crazy stuff. Right when they like right. miss a bucket or you know f- uh, interception or something or or like even like a uh, concert performance you know like the Beyonce crazy look face and stuff and so they it's the same thing like they so they're people are starting to put my face on like pretty much all the like even today like when they revealed Guile and like his poses people started to put my face on already <laughs> so they're ready they're ready to go <laughs> they they have my face ready to go and they're going to stick it stick it onto like a new character and and some of their ideas are pretty cool and funny and and you know and uh i i have nothing but love for them you know and um for them to take the time to do that we know it's all in good fun um and uh, you know, whatever they want to do, I, I support, man. As long as, you know, you keep it nice and chill and uh, have something fun and uh, exciting to look at. For sure. It's a good attitude. Yeah. Cool, man. Well, I think that's it. So do you have any final shout outs you want to give? Uh, just shout outs to everybody that has uh, supported us and, you know, believing, um, you know, what, what we're doing for the scene. You know, it's, we've been here since <laughs> I would like to say day one and, um, uh, anything that we can do to to help better the scene, shoot us some ideas. Can't think of them all, man. I I, I would like to, but um, there maybe there's something we don't see that can that can uh, help the cause. And uh, if you guys obviously want to follow us on Twitter, uh, you can uh, follow Level Up Series, uh, which is the company Twitter, or my Twitter is Alex Valle. Set, or, sorry, I was going to say my age, but Alex Valle SF4. Um, no, I'm not going to change it to SF5 because I know a lot of people ask this too. S, uh, the reason why it's SF4 is because that was the first game I've decided to host events with. Mm-hmm. So that will stick that way and uh, maybe even up to like when we have Street Fighter 6 or whatever they call the next one, if there's the next one coming out, they'll just know that Street Fighter 4 is when I started to uh, hold it down for the uh, SF community. For sure. So. Very cool. Well, it was a real pleasure talking with you. Yeah. Yeah, you guys too, man. You guys are awesome. Yeah, it was just it's a, it's an honor for just speaking for the whole team just to have you as our first um our first guest here on on what we're hoping to be a, a much larger series. It was really good to to have you on as sort of the the debut personality. So, thank you. <laughs> awesome, man. Uh anytime, hit me up and uh I'm glad to uh spread the word to everybody. Great. All right, oh. man. We'll talk to you soon. Yeah, take care. Right. Bye-bye.